welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In this video, we will learn how an ice plant works, along with the different parts and functions of an ice plant. So, let's get into the topic. An ice manufacturing plant is a facility that manufactures large blocks of ice for industrial and commercial use. In other words, an ice manufacturing plant is a complete installation for the production and storage of large blocks of ice for industrial and commercial use. So, let's see how ice is actually produced in the ice manufacturing plant. The ice manufacturing plant works almost similarly as the domestic refrigerators we have in our houses. In our houses we use the domestic refrigerators for producing small cubes of ice in small quantities. But here, we are going to do the same thing in a large scale to produce large blocks of ice in larger quantities, so, obviously there will be some differences in this system. The ice manufacturing plant works under the vapor compression refrigeration system. So, it will have the four basic components that every vapor compression refrigeration system has. First of all, here we have a compressor, then we have a condenser over here, a throttle valve and finally an evaporator. So, these four basic components are already inside a ice manufacturing plant because it falls under the vapor compression refrigeration system. But to work as an ice plant, an extension is added. This evaporator is connected to a brine tank as we can see here. So, what is a brine tank? When we keep adding and increasing the concentration of salt in water, then it becomes a brine solution. This brine tank reserves the highly concentrated brine solution inside it. The evaporator over here, is connected to the brine solution through the brine tank. Inside the brine tank, and on the brine solution, here we have large ice cans. These ice cans are according to the size of ice blocks that are to be produced in this ice manufacturing plant. Inside these ice cans we will place water that will be frozen to turn into ice blocks when we will supply the cooling effect from the evaporator to this brine solution inside this tank. Now, whenever we talk about any kind of refrigeration process, the first thing we need is, a refrigerant or coolant. We can think of a refrigerant as the messenger or traveler. Because, refrigerant is the actual carrier or medium of heat exchange throughout the whole refrigeration cycle. Here, in a nice manufacturing plant, we will use two refrigerants. The first and primary refrigerant is ammonia, and as the second refrigerant we have the brine solution we just talked about. The brine solution is cheaper and increases the heat carrying capacity, so we can use it along with ammonia as a refrigerant, which will help us extract the heat from the surroundings of these ice cans. Now, let's see how the whole process works. First of all, this compressor starts working. The job of the compressor is to pressurize or compress the primary ammonia vapor refrigerant inside this compressor chamber. Now, we know that if pressure increases, it also increases the temperature. So, when, this ammonia vapor refrigerant is compressed inside the compressor chamber by squeezing the vapor very tightly together, it will heat up. After that, this high pressure and high temperature vapor ammonia refrigerant will leave the compressor and will enter into the condenser through this connected pipe. Here, we have a condenser. When high temperature high pressure vapor ammonia refrigerant enters this cold condenser, then the condenser absorbs the heat from the vapor refrigerant, and completely converts it into liquid. The condenser is connected to a cooling tower as we can see here. This condenser is continuously water cooled by a regular supply of cold chilled water coming through this pipe from this cooling tower, which will liberate the latent heat of this vapor coming into the condenser, and thus condensing keeps happening. So, in easier words, condenser changes the incoming high temperature high pressure vapor refrigerant into liquid state by changing its phase. Here we had ammonia vapor coming in. And now we have liquid ammonia refrigerant going out, so the phase is changed. Now this high pressure high temperature liquid ammonia refrigerant will leave the condenser, and accumulate inside this receiver chamber. The function of the receiver is to collect and accumulate this high pressure high temperature liquid ammonia refrigerant coming from the condenser up to an optimum level, so that it can keep supplying the liquid ammonia refrigerant forward to the other parts according to requirement. Connected to this receiver, here we have an expansion valve or throttle valve. 
As per requirement, this high-pressure high-temperature liquid ammonia refrigerant will pass through this expansion valve or throttle valve using this connected pipe. Now, this high-pressure liquid refrigerant coming from the receiver will be expanded inside this expansion valve. We know that when expansion occurs, the pressure between the molecules decreases considerably, thus the temperature falls. So, this high-pressure liquid refrigerant will be expanded into low-pressure, low-temperature liquid refrigerant. In practical use, at this point we do not get only liquid refrigerant, but here we actually obtain a mixture of low-pressure, low-temperature liquid and vapor refrigerant. Thus, here we get a mixture of very cold, chilled, low-temperature liquid and vapor refrigerant coming out of the expansion valve. Then, this liquid and vapor mixed refrigerant will be passed over to the evaporator. We all know that, the main cooling effect or refrigeration effect always occurs in the evaporator. We have already seen that this evaporator is connected to this brine tank, and here is a pump that constantly circulates this brine solution from the tank towards the evaporator. So there is a continuous flow of high temperature brine solution from this tank to the evaporator through this pipe, and cold chilled brine solution returns through this pipe back to the tank after the cooling effect has been achieved inside the evaporator. Let's say it another way. So, when this low pressure, very cold, chilled, low temperature liquid refrigerant coming from the throttle valve will enter the evaporator coils, it will absorb all the heat present in the surface of this pipe containing the high temperature brine solution. By absorbing all the heat from the incoming brine solution, this cold chilled liquid refrigerant will completely turn into low pressure vapor refrigerant inside these evaporator coils, and the brine solution will be turned into very cold chilled liquid brine solution after giving away all the heat to this cold ammonia refrigerant inside the evaporator coils. Thus the cooling effect or refrigeration effect has occurred in the evaporator. Now, after giving away all of its heat, this very cold brine solution will come back to the brine tank using this pipe. Now the surrounding areas around this tank is filled with these incoming very cold brine solution. When we place water inside these ice cans, the cold brine solution absorbs all the heat from the surface of these ice cans, as a result the cans become so cold that, water placed inside this large ice cans are converted into large blocks of ice. Once done, the ice cans are taken out of the brine tank using cranes and then by placing the cans with ice in normal water we can take out the ice blocks from inside the cans, and water is filled again for making more ice blocks. The water from the surroundings of these ice can have become hot by absorbing the temperature of water from the cans, this hot brine solution will again go through this pipe by the help of this pump into the evaporator, and again after giving away all heat to the cold ammonia liquid refrigerant, the brine solution will become very cold and will again come back to the tank to keep the continuous process of making ice. On the other hand the low pressure ammonia vapor refrigerant will leave the evaporator, and enter into this compressor through this connected pipe. Now, this low pressure vapor refrigerant coming to the condenser will be again compressed inside the compressor chamber unconverted to high pressure high temperature vapor. Then again this high pressure high temperature vapor will be passed to this condenser where it will change phase and will be converted to liquid, then it is passed to the expansion valve, the evaporator and again to the compressor, so the cycle keeps repeating over and over again, and refrigeration or cooling of brine is obtained continuously in the evaporator region, which ultimately converts water inside the ice cans into blocks of ice throughout the whole process. So. This is how an ice manufacturing plant works. Thank you for watching this video. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel Academic Game Tutorials for more updated videos.